Um, so, as many people know in the room, and some may not know, we partner uh, with and have many compliance partners, which are all um, listed up here. And our compliance partners are hugely valuable to LinkedIn. They help financial services organizations and other organizations stay compliant so your compliant officers can sleep at night and you don't get a bunch of questions from legal, even though you probably still will. Um, the compliance uh, partners definitely help uh, with that portion of the discussion. So very happy to introduce uh, Devin Redman from Proofpoint, who uh, was the co-founder and CEO of Nextgate. And Proofpoint is one of our compliance partners. And also Nate Schaefer, who's a manager at Accenture. And they are going to be talking about social media security and compliance. Everyone's favorite topic. We're going to make it fun and, exactly. and exciting. Of course. And then, and then we're going to dive into an interactive session about rolling out Sales Navigator. I'll hand it over to you guys. All right. For awesome. the next Thank you so much. Yeah. appreciate Just it. Just have to move forward on there. You got it. Yeah, nothing like following up stories about the MBA with <laughs> compliance, security, all of that good stuff, but uh, that's fine. So uh, again, Devin Redmond, I am uh, the GM of the Social Media Security and Compliance Division at Proofpoint. Been in the security and compliance space for 20 years, so I've got lots of boring security and compliance stories for you. And uh, joining me here is actually Nate Schaefer. And Nate, why don't you introduce yourself? Everyone, um, Nate Schaefer. I'm uh, part of Accenture Digital, um, second largest you know digital agency out there. Uh, been in the social space for around six years coming up. Um, started out in social listening, but have been working with a lot of other opportunities, employee advocacy, social compliance, and so forth as well. Great, thanks, Nate. Uh, so we wanted to talk about a few scenarios, and I was gonna try and see if I could say all of these words without fumbling, safety and scale for social selling. Maybe add things like the seashore by the side of that, and say it over and over again really fast. Uh, but really what we wanted to do is give you a little background. I think the use cases and everybody really understands that social selling is a critical component to all of your programs uh, and to basically any business, right? From the NBA to financial services. So I don't know if you want to kick these slides off, Nate. So the biggest thing with social selling is it, it's not the actual hard sale, but the relationship and expanding, identifying, and building those relationships. So something we've really noticed, especially in the insurance, financial advisory fields, is it's there's not a lot of communication going on, especially uh, between consumers and their insurers. Uh, EY's Global Insurance Report recently uh, pointed out 44% of all uh, consumers have not received any communication from their insurer in the past 18 months. Now, this is a great opportunity for us to go ahead and expand on these relationships and start identifying the right consumers at the right moments in order to go ahead and uh, start building out those relationships that. Uh, are ever so present. So uh, we've kind of looked at this in a couple different ways. Um, insurance advisors, LinkedIn, Sales Navigator is a great example of this, how we can go ahead and identify any of these uh, specific consumers, whether if they're in specific life events, changing jobs, anything like that, identify, identifying the right consumers at the right time, and having the appropriate uh, compliance and training in place in order to understand. That's one of the biggest things that um, I've seen at a lot of my clients as well. Agent, um, agents are really excited to go ahead and reach out to any of their consumers, but they're very scared of the stick to come down and yell at them from the compliance aspect. And that's really based around um, an aspect of training, having the confidence, having those examples like we've seen with the NBA and Guardian Life Insurance of how I've can be successful in the social selling space and how I can communicate compliantly uh, with that as well. And that's where a lot of these uh, different compliance solutions can come in because rather than it being, you know, the, le the lawyers coming down on you, it's just a generated message saying, hey, this message is no longer compliant. Here's some other examples and so forth as well. And so just to kind of put a, a point to that, I think it's important to look at real world examples, right? I think everybody here hears the word compliance, they hear the word security, and sometimes they may not have context for what can happen out there. So you get people engaged, you get them uh, communicating with potential prospects, and more often than not, what you'll find is 
the people doing this are not compliance experts, right? Mm -hmm. They're people out there trying to sell, establish a relationship. And so you will find that some of the things that they communicate miss a thing or two. Maybe they don't have a link that gives the details of what constitutes good or great or whatever offer they have in there. And so you need the ability to actually understand those, see those in real time, be able to take action on them, be able to preserve that so you do have retention around that, and then be able to prove that you had that from the beginning uh, of being able to have a policy in place, that the policy was communicated, that when the policy was violated, you were able to take action on it, and then post facto, the ability to actually see that in your chosen archive or retention format. But being able to do that end to end and then scale it across hundreds of advisors, thousands of advisors, tens of thousands of agents is really where a lot of people run into challenges, right? You roll out the first part of the program, you get a few hundred, and then you're trying to figure out how do I do the next phase of that rollout? How do I make that scale when I'm looking at those messages? And, I'm sure you have some perspective on the number of messages that you guys see. I, yeah, um, I've worked with clients with 10,000 users on social accounts down to a couple hundred. Uh, Accenture ourselves, we have 50,000 plus users on our social network. So we're talking thousands of different messages in there, all in different regulated industries. How do we go ahead and make sure that everything's compliant and not only what we're saying is good, but also what customers are saying as well? And the other challenge that kind of comes with this is as you engage, people will engage back with you, right? So you can't just think about what you're doing outbound and how your agents are communicating. As you establish more of a presence, whether it's your brand or whether it's an agent who's communicating more, you are often going to get comments and conversation back in that you have to pay attention to as well, right? So this is a, a great scenario. This is actually on a brand account. Uh, the person that's commenting back is basically uh, implicating them in something that FINRA would have to take a look at. They're saying that the uh, company in, in this case, again, this is a real world example, uh, has stolen money from them, right? Which is actually one of the FINRA regulations for social media. You have to have a response to that within X amount of time uh, in that environment. And so you're gonna see that. You're gonna see people sharing their account information. You're gonna see them sharing credit card information. So how do you, now that you've engaged, kind of keep that you know, genie that's out of the bottle going the right direction and granting the wishes that you want as opposed to going off track and starting to do these things. And you'll just be surprised by how, um, let's say silly, consumers can be on these social networks, pushing out their social security numbers on Facebook pages, their account information, basic credit card information as well. And using these different compliance solutions, you can automate, have an appropriate workflow to delete these before anything can spread. I think the last part, and one that, you know, as financial services organizations uh, look at these things, they tend to start with compliance, right? Because they're looking at the revenue generation, they're looking at what financial advisors, what agents are doing when they communicate out. But the reality is, as you leverage a new communication channel and you become successful at it, what you will find is the bad guys wanna take advantage of that. So the more activity you have and the more you have a social brand and social sellers, the more likely you're going to see actual security issues. The same way you do over email where you have phishing and spam and malware, the same as on your website, you will start to see these things actually go after you in a social media environment. Uh, so this is, this is just one example. Again, this is a real customer example that they were kind enough to share. Uh, we changed the names of the innocent here. Uh, we probably could have left the spammer because that, even though it looks like it's just a competing offer and somebody jumping on and spamming with their offer on there, if you follow that person back, it's actually a multi-level marketing scheme. They're trying to get you to give them your information. They're trying to get you to connect with them and disclose things. And they're actually trying to get your credit card for a membership fee to join that multi-level marketing firm. And so these types of things are the reality that you will face as you go out and operate. Uh, and if you're effective, uh, one of the prices of success is that other people want to capture and piggyback on your success in that environment. And that will, you know, uh, can come all the way from things like mistakes all the way into people actually actively trying to exploit you. So just wrapping up quickly, it's a short session here, but uh, some of the best practices that we've seen and that we've shared and, and worked with uh, Nate and Accenture on as well in customer environments are really thinking about a handful of key things. In this instance, really looking at five key areas that you wanna have coverage. 
One of the ones that a lot of people don't think about right offhand, but as they start getting into these programs, whether it's company pages and accounts or whether it's sellers' profiles, is actually knowing what all of those accounts are. What's that ecosystem and that infrastructure that you're working with? So how do you know what those accounts are? Once you know what the accounts, how do you do things like having uh, people process, having roles and responsibility around that so that you can actually put good coverage in place there? Uh, I think a lot of people have crossed this step of having internal policies and guidelines uh, and making those very, very clear, following up on training. I think training is something that oftentimes uh, is done once or twice at hire, but is not something that's refreshed frequently, and that's something that most organizations should invest in more training mechanisms, making it easier, trying to gamify it uh, so that it becomes more of a contest in those environments. Uh, the other thing that we see a lot of organizations learning to do and doing more often is publishing external guidelines, whether that's on a company page or whether that's on the profiles of their sellers uh, in that environment. What are the rules of the road for engaging and what should you expect and what type of behavior do we expect back from you as you engage with us? So that should somebody put their account information up on an account and you remove it or they spam you and you remove it, there's actually a clear disclaimer as to why you're doing that. It's part of the policy of engaging with us as an organization organization in doing that in those environments. Last piece, thinking about technology as a stack and not just as a, hey, I've got my latest tool and that's going to solve all my problems. If you look at the evolution of the other communication channels you use, like email, like web, you probably have a very robust technology stack. You have solutions that help you do selling and marketing and measurement around that. You have solutions that actually do security as well as compliance, and they're dedicated to that task, and they do that with things like natural language processing, uh, signature-based technologies, and you probably also have dedicated retention e-discovery systems. As you get more mature and robust and you're trying to scale your social selling programs, you're going to find that the pace of that scale is going to require more and more automation and a more robust technology stack. So thinking about what you want to leverage for social selling, uh, whether you're leveraging Navigator, whether you're leveraging Navigator and Hearsay Social, whether you're leveraging other tools that perform security underneath that to deal with the increase in spam, uh, an example, I guess, would, would be us in that space, or whether you're looking at retention and you're looking at solutions that are dedicated to doing that, uh, like a Smarsh or a Proofpoint again in that area. Uh, you need to think about a full technology stack and assume that over time you're going to have very targeted use cases that you need to cover with different areas of technology. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, and it's really about changing the culture as well, especially within the financial services space. There's a lot of fear associated with that, so making sure you have the appropriate examples, education in place in order to go ahead and let your agents know this is good, this is bad, and having uh, the appropriate support structure as well, so when they do have those questions, you can make sure everything's addressed. So with that very, very quick talk, I think we might have time for maybe a question or two, if anybody wants to ask any questions in this space. Happy to answer, otherwise we can save it for later. Yes. Uh, so there are, the question was, are there tools that you can integrate that will auto-delete? So uh, in LinkedIn, there's a members first approach. So deleting on LinkedIn still needs to be done manually, but you can auto-notify on inbound spam as well as uh, malicious content. Uh, and there are tools to do that. So we're one of those tools that helps. Any other questions? All right, we will turn it over to Craig. Are you going to introduce Craig? Thanks, everybody. Appreciate uh, the quick time there. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.